Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the CGMW uh, live Q&A with Carlo. How do you pronounce your last name, Carlo? Ariano. Ariano? Yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> well, basically, he'll give a brief introduction pretty soon. But before we start the actual live Q&A, for those who are in attendance right now, I want to go over a few points. Um, first of all, if at any moment during this live broadcast you lose connection to your uh, actual uh, session, you have to physically restart your computer before you can log back into the GoToMeeting uh, uh, GoToWebinar session. It's a technical glitch that we have no idea why it exists, but as of right now, that's the only workaround that we have. Um, beyond that, for those of you who have microphones, and or webcams, please make sure they're plugged in and working prior to uh, asking your questions. But in general, if anyone has any questions, can you please uh, type them into the question field? Um, and that way I can go down the list and ask the questions based on the order that they receive. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me switch it over to Carlo. So, Good Carlo, afternoon. it should be in your screen momentarily. Um, one second. Okay, Carl, did you accept the, there it is. Okay, yeah. So uh, I would say go ahead with your introduction and, whoa, you already have stuff showing. Perfect, okay. Excellent. So go All ahead. Right. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Carlo Orleano. I am a uh, concept artist, senior concept artist over at Sonyac Games. And prior to that, I worked on uh, Planet of the Apes, Spider-Man, um, Van Helsing, um, and over at Blizzard on World of Warcraft. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions you have about the demo or um, concept art in general. So um, let's get started. Okay, uh, one second. I think we have a... No one submitted any questions that I can see. If you guys are there, there's a field that you can type in. Uh, for questions. And while we wait for them to select me with questions, Carlo, if you can, you can start, I guess, talking about some of your artwork and showing a slideshow if you have it. Okay. Um, well, what we're looking at right now is a demo that I did for class um, where I originally drew this, this war beast uh, in pencil, scanned it in, and then uh, turned it into a multiply layer. And underneath that, I painted um, you know, the textures and, and, and the rendering, as well as some of the finer details. Um, if you notice, the character design itself has a kind of composition. Um, there's this triangular composition that all points towards the head. So even though I may have more complex forms happening in here, um, it's all pointing towards the head. And here's this diamond shape that helps um, uh, frame the whole thing. Now, um, we can go over real quickly the um, um, the things that I was talking about in the in the demo. Now, as I said before, uh, the students in my class have a tendency to use um, what I call FACTS as an acronym, F-A-C-T-S, form follows function, archetypes, characterization, tools and silhouette. I don't consider silhouette until I've considered the other story aspects of the, uh, of the design because uh, that's what dictates what the design will be. Um, well, let, let's take a look at, um, you know, two existing designs. Not, not done by me, obviously. But, um, let's take a look at Serenity. Now, that's a very clever ship. Um, it's supposed to look like basically some sort of sick turkey. And um, it's also 
supposed to look kind of junky. Now, that's a clever idea. We, we have this, these heroes that are in this kind of junky ship, and we're supposed to feel for them. But um, there are weaknesses about this design. Now, when you're designing something like this, there's uh, a, a big component of, of this ship is the romance of piloting your own ship. Now, most people wouldn't want to fly this ship. Um, and also, it's suffering from what we call the layer cake, which is um, three objects um, competing both in size and importance uh, and level of detail. If you look at the central fuselage, the engine section, and then the, um, the cockpit se section, they're almost all the same size. Uh, and that really, really weakens the design because um, your eye doesn't know where to look. About the only time you, you really do look is when the ship goes into high speed and then this starts to, uh, you know, glow. But it, it fails at the first rule of designing ships like this, and that is, do you want to fly it, right? Whereas um, the Millennium Falcon, you know, it's also a junky ship, but you want to fly it, you know? And it doesn't suffer from, um, as we were saying, uh, uh, the layer cake syndrome. Um, the Millennium Falcon in essentially is designed like a, a flying saucer meets a World War II bomber. And so you get that sense, even, if, even though you don't have it uh, on, a, on a conscious level, subconsciously, um, it, all the cool things that you might associate with that stuff uh, comes out. Um, the cockpit section is a lot like the B-29. We've got belly gunner and top gunner just like you would have on uh, Flying Fortress. And then, like I said, it's shaped like a flying saucer. So yeah, it does. It's junky, but it's something you want to fly. Um, let's see. Let's go over a couple of pieces in my work. Uh, Carlo, one second. We have a bunch yes. of questions that just popped in. So um, we'll come back to this in a second, if that's possible. Uh, mm -hmm. The first question we have is from, I believe this is Cassiano Benhiero, Marcel mm -hmm. da Silva. Um, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a microphone, so uh, I'm going to read the question that he wrote. He uh, mm -hmm. basically says, um, when you have to work with a character with more complex uh, I think it's uh, it says in the what is this? in the military like armor or clothes. You apply textures in the mm -hmm. same way on the video. Do you use any reference like the arm of the creature in the screen? Do you use any ref for the con construct of the arm? So I guess he's wanted um, to say like a complex or rudimentary like armor, clothes, and things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that that comes with. Um you know, I mean, I have looked, for example, when sketching out this kind of, uh, this dead space demo that I was doing in class, uh, I did look at photographs of, of Apollo astronauts, but I didn't look at too many of them. Um, in, in the beginning, when I was first starting, I was, um, I had reference all of the time. Um, and, and that's what you should do, because it'll give you uh, a mental library of shapes and, and forms. Um, but as I went on, I, I started to use it less and less. It, oh, not, not because um, it's unnecessary, but because I started to develop that library. As, as soon as you draw something, um, it becomes yours, you know, and it's something that you can use, uh, use, use later. Um, like, for example, let's look at this one. So this is the quick sketch of it. Now, um, I know what... Um, sort of ammo packs look like. I, I know what the, the ring on, on the neck of um, uh, a spacesuit looks like. Um, and so I had that in my head already. Um, and when I, when I designed it, oops, that's a good one to look at anyway. <laughs> um, when I designed it, um, you know, that stuff I didn't have to really look for reference at. Um, whereas in the case of this, this uh, there, it, there's, there's nothing that really exists that